Hello, hello, we are live. I'm so excited for this. I'm Heather Jean, I am a pure learner for today and I am so, so happy to be sharing this space with Francis Mary and Nazma Katan who um, have just, I, I'm just so in awe of, of what you, Oh, what you do and what you bring to the world and what you share. And when we were talking about, you know, how do you show up with confidence and energy, you both said that you prepare your own personal meditations in your own voice. And that made my head explode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I was like, what? That's a thing. So I'm so thankful that you're sharing this with me, but also that we can be live so that others can share it as well. So um, I'll leave you to introduce yourselves. Let's start with Frances Mary. Do you want to just tell the community a little bit about you? I know we just saw you recently, but. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so I am a singer, songwriter, performer, um, creative and entrepreneur uh, based in Bristol, UK. Um, and yeah, I've just released my debut single last week under the uh, project name Mary in the Mirror. So that's going really well. I've got my new video off on YouTube. So check it out. <laughs> yeah, do check it out. It is gorgeous. Absolutely. I mean, I, I believed it would be, but it, oh, it is just breathtaking. Yeah, I'm 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 so pleased for you to share that. Um, okay, so where do they get that again? Mary in the Mirror? Uh, yeah, so if you just um, go on YouTube and type in Mary in the Mirror and the track name is Monster, then you should be able to find it there. It should come up. I literally <laughs> just did that. It's right there. Oh. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Nazma, do you want to introduce yourself? I can will. Hi, everybody. So <clears throat> lovely to meet you, Francis. And I'm so excited to listen to your music. I can't wait to see it in YouTube. Oh, thank um, you. <clears throat> excited time for you. Um, so uh, my name is Nazma. I'm a mom of three. Um, I've been a mindset and business coach for over five years now. Um, and my passion is basically to help moms mainly to, even though I work with um, women who are not mums, but mainly to work with mums uh, to he heal their uh, subconscious mind where we actually hold limiting beliefs that, are hold, that hold us back from uh, who we really are. Um, and I think in a very simple form, I would say it makes, it made me when I worked on my subconscious mind, uh, be a better parent, uh, be a better self of, of better version of me, um, feel <clears throat> more aligned of with my authentic self um, and it's much more easier to be able to um, have inner peace I mean I guess success is it's a way of saying I you know most people understand that you will have to have this six seven figure million and uh, whatever you call it uh, business but at the end of the day if you don't have any inner peace there's no point of having that and initially when I started my business my aim was to have this you know freedom financial freedom uh, but I guess through the journey I've learned is it's not about that. It's more about how you can have that um, inner peace within yourself. And then everything else kind of comes to you um, without having to hustle. So yeah. that's what I do. And that's my main mission and has been from day one. Um, yeah, so that's me. I love that. And we've done we've done Clubhouse together and things. And I, I just I love the way you explain things and you, you're you're I'm I'm like chaos right and you're like just so beautifully calm and centered <laughs> far from it and I want that <laughs> <laughs> far from it I try I do try and practice what I preach but I was saying to you earlier on Heather that <clears throat> we're human being um the most important thing I guess I'm fortunate to to have is the tools so when I am not being when I'm being I call myself the momster <laughs> not the monster the momster that I am sometimes <laughs> because of the chaos the kids bring in I just hold on to those tools and I try and overcome the challenging times but at, in actual reality is you have to feel what you feel you can't avoid that and you can't push it away yeah and I, I just so deeply believe that as well and uh, I think you both in some way know my story of I, I did that. I, I pushed it all down and I'm still tempted to oh. like 
And that's where my meditation practice really struggles is because I, I know that there's stuff that's going to come up and I don't want it to. So I can tell when I'm avoiding my meditation practice, I, I can tell that there's stuff I need to be addressing. Yeah. And, I, and I know that because I don't do it. I just hide from my meditation then. And this is this is a really good example. I'm I'm sure Frances will agree with her experience, but um, it's our subconscious, uh, you know, the belief system that we have under the subconscious mind uh, that we are not uh, uh, we are not aware of is what is procrastinate makes us procrastinate towards meditation because it knows it's trying to keep you in the safe zone. It knows you're going to unveil some stuff that you don't want to unveil. It knows you're going to go through some painful experiences if you did that meditation. So it's just saying, you know what, it's not good for you. Don't go to that place. It's an unknown place for you. Stay in the known, which is more comfortable. Yeah. Um, so it is definitely something I did when I started my meditation. <clears throat> I'm making this longer, but I feel like it needs to be said is when I started my personal journey, Back in 2014, I read this book, book called The Miracle Morning, and it talks about the, um, the morning routine. And I was this lady who just wanted to be positive. And I, this, I did this morning routine. I did my meditation, and it talks about the five pillars, which is um, save, uh, um, what do you say? Um, savers, it's far, s silence, affirmation, visualization, um, oh God, exercise, and something else I can't remember anyway. So I tried to do this and, and, and feel like I was this positive person. Whilst you can do all of that stuff and you can become the positive person, that's on the surface. You are not dealing with what's underneath. So almost maybe five out of seven days, I'll do my meditation, but the two days I'll avoid. But now, even though life is way more chaotic than it was then, I still find my five minutes Time, uh, five minutes spare so I can have that silent moment because it's so important to quieten the mind um, and that's what where when you start mastering quieting your mind is when you're able to deal with the challenging moments beautiful Francis Murray mm. how does meditation come into your life um I guess I've been practicing for at least 10 years um it's generally guided meditation. Um, I just find it easier to listen to someone else's voice and then focus on a mantra. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do it every morning, pretty much. I do occasionally miss a morning, but I definitely feel a difference if I miss, you know, a day um, that, I, that, I, that I'm more anxious, uh, that I'm more stressed. And I think meditation's made me a much more balanced person where um, I don't take problems quite so seriously anymore. I try and find solutions. And I think that it's made me less reactive as a person. You know, I'm much more, yeah. things don't automatically upset me. Like I talk. Brilliant. I guess it allows us to be more honest with ourselves too, because it is, allowing that stuff to come up um francis mary and i do a confidence challenge with with some other wonderful um community members from confidence recovery and we um we meet every couple of weeks and do an update and i said to the group this week actually that 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 there are things coming up from my canada trip and from having been in the space where my mother lived and and all of those things that i would want to, to keep down and I, the, and so that's where meditation will allow those things to, to give me access. But I, I, you have to kind of be ready to face those things. And I think what's beautiful about you guys having a consistent practice is that, that that's kind of c coming out gradually. Whereas for me, it tends to gush out because I've kept it down for so long and then it's like a volcano. So I can see why you notice it when you don't do it. Huh. Okay, so I'm so excited about this. I did not know you could do your own meditation. Well, I did. Of course, you you can record anything you want, right? So how does this work, Ben? Like, how, like both of you said, this is how you radiate, you know, confident energy is by 
you know, creating your own meditation and your own voice. And I do know that m that it is important. Um, my children have been through various forms of hypnosis and the voice that it comes through. Uh, one of them wanted a Canadian voice. Right. That's ultimately the, the voice inside their head. One of them wanted a British voice. And, you know, and it so that there's there's there is a, a, a resonance with that voice. Right. Yeah. Do you want to go f f first, Francis, and I can go second? I don't know. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't mind, Nasmo. I'm happy to go first. You go, or... you go, you go. I want to hear your. I want to hear your version. Okay. Um. So yeah. So I I had done quite a lot of hypnotherapy. Um. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's I started doing hypnotherapy when I was quite young because I was having trouble sleeping. And somebody recommended it as a remedy. And so I went along and had these sessions and had them recorded and, and they were lovely, really helped me. Um, and then over, over the years, I have gone back and had other sessions with hypnotherapists and I've always found them beneficial. And then I started kind of coming up with this idea of like, well, actually, wouldn't it be even more effective if, if it was really personalized to me um, and if I could really, cause you know, whenever I'd have a session with someone, they'd kind of bring in some of these elements that I would be talking about things that I wanted to do. Like my singing was one of them and it definitely, it was definitely working, but it wasn't working at the level that I was kind of pushing for. Um, and so I decided to just start scripting my own journeys and um, obviously I'm not a qualified hypnotherapist or anything, but I've done so much that I thought, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do this. <laughs> and so I started doing it and I've written quite a few scripts for different areas of my life. One of the first things I did was, um, was I kind of cemented my morning routine. Um, and that really helped me get the mindset of doing the meditation, doing the writing practice, doing my yoga in the morning as well, which is really a big part of my life. Um, and then looking after my, my nutrition. And, and it was like, I've wanted to do these things for so long. And I was like, the only way this is gonna happen is if I program it in. <laughs> so I, I mean, I've got a history of you know, recording and music. So I've had microphones and stuff like that. So I went online and I found um, some music and I got some really lovely relaxing gong music, which is my favorite. But you can find music online, you can buy it. And yeah, I just used it to create my own personalized uh, recordings where I just take myself on a guided journey and visualize what I wanted, you know, for my routines, I visualized how I wanted my day to be the next day. And then I did other ones where I wanted to go into like a space where I could vision and really kind of like imagine my future in a really powerful way. Um, so I have one where I kind of go into a really peaceful forest and I get into a really relaxed zone. And then I allow my imagination to just kind of go wild. <laughs> I start imagining all the things that I want to see in my life. Um, there's another one that I've gone in where I've been a bit more specific. And what I find is really helpful is that it's because it's my own voice and it's in my own language, my brain just absorbs it a lot easier. It just kind of goes in. And yeah, I pretty much, not every night, but most nights I listen to one just to go to sleep. It helps me to sleep. And then it helps focus my mind towards the things that I want to achieve. So it's been a very powerful process for me. And I guess I've been using these meditations for about five years or so. So, so you, so you, okay. So, so I, so I, I'm, I'm brand new. Like I'm, I'm not messing around here. I really don't know. Like I'm really, this is great. Okay. So I, so I think about the things that I want to achieve and I find some beautiful music. I love gong music. I'm, I'm a massive fan of gong baths and I, I'm in on that anytime I can get. Um, and there are apps for that as well. And then, and you, you, you have your morning routine, which helps center you. 
-hmm. you have your music and then how do you create these recordings like well how does it i mean i understand how, how well like the tool of recording but i'm just thinking like what would i record yeah, I mean, I use um, a software called Log Logic, um, but you know, I'm sure there's free there's free versions of of these kind of softwares you can get as well. There's something called Reaper, which is which I think is free or at least um, a lot cheaper. Okay. Um, so you would basically um, load your background music in, and then you create a channel for your microphone, plug your microphone in. Uh, record your voice the nice thing is is that you can kind of do it in the cadence that works for you you know like in the sort of um so that you've got this rhythm with your voice that so that it's, it's more of your natural rhythm do you know what I mean so that it's because quite often when I'm doing a guided meditation they'll tell me to breathe in and then I'll breathe out but it won't be in time with my natural breath yeah so that's why when I do <coughs> Self, I find it much easier to tune my breath in with what I'm asking myself to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. So what am I saying in this recording? Um, well, when I first started, I actually went online and I found a bunch of scripts. And I, um, so in hypnotherapy, they kind of take you through like a relaxation sec section at the beginning. And then there's like a kind of section where they go a bit deeper um and then they get more specific so you can basically you can go online you can um you can do a search and you can find these scripts and what i did was i found a beginning uh, the middle and the end sections and then i i pretty much just changed them wholesale um into language that was fitting to me um but it was good to kind of have that as a kind of basis of how i should structure it so okay. yeah, so you need to do a bit of research and find scripts online, or if you're confident with writing scripts, or I could even send you some of mine so you can kind of get a, get a feel for it. <laughs> I would love it if you could post some in the comments afterwards. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. I would love that. Like just a sample, just to, to for people to see. Because I genuinely don't like. I understand what you guys are saying. I just don't know how to do this. It's, so, it's, Nasma, how do you do it? How does it work okay, for you? Okay, so um, to go back to your how how you what words you can use. What words do you use in your mind when you're criticizing yourself? <laughs> That's the first, of... you know. No, honestly. So, like, I used to feel like happiness wasn't uh, permanent for me. That was a big one for me. How could I change it? So those words to begin with in a basic form. But then, then you can, you know, like Francis said, you can go into de deeper, which is scripting, which is the most powerful thing you can do yourself. Like you can visualize your ideal day, like from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep. So how do you feel the five senses, the smell, taste, everything? Like how do you feel physically, you know, um, or that's the deeper end. So initially start off with how you're feeling your negative inner critics. What are they saying in your head? And then change that to the positive side. So I don't want to feel like happiness is, is temporary. I want to feel happiness is always coming to me. It's it's my work. I'm worthy of it. It's, it's permanent and it's always there around me. So using those words, I mean, to begin with, it would be a good way. But then oh, no, when I, I mean, if I go with myself, uh, when I started my, so I left work, a uh, corporate job in 20 just beginning of 2013 because I was getting bullied that was my third time getting bullied at work um and it was just like the worst place I was in um and someone said to me about um my energy radiates what I bring in my life and I was like what <laughs> I was so angry when they told me that I was like how on earth am I bringing bullying people you know people who bully me into my life but it's like now when I look back I laugh I laugh at myself not in a bad way but in a way that look how five come to understand it is what it is truth it is the truth your energy does radiate in however energy whatever you're feeling now is bringing in things in your life kind of that with with the energy that you have now so if it's not balanced if it's not aligned with the happy happiness frequency then then it will come the opposite stuff will come to you and it's when you use those words internally and you change it around 
um, that's when you know things kind of change but it's over time when you do it over time and that's why it's important to use your voice because majority of the time the voice you hear in your head is your voice so when you yeah. use affirmations that are of your voice in a meditation it's really really powerful because your brain doesn't understand the difference between reality and not real the you know it's the time that is not real and it is real so i guess <clears throat> If I go into the neuroscience perspective, um, you know, our brain wave, there's five, uh, you know, different, different uh, wave that it goes through when we are, the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. That's why it's, you know, we are advised to do the meditation first thing in the first 20 minutes of awake time and 20 minutes before you go to sleep, because that's the time when your brain is on the theta wave, which is the most um, effective time for your brain to uh, be is more suggestible. Uh, so the words that you say, your subconscious, subconscious mind is easily takes it in, because during the day you're into uh, uh, I believe it's alpha and the beta state, which is when you're more conscious. Five percent of your brain is active. Ninety-five <clears throat> percent is active when you're about to go to sleep, and when you're in deep deep sleep, and then when you're waking up twenty minutes before. So. When you're doing those times, uh, meditation and those times, using the words that you want your brain to believe, reprogramming is what Francis said earlier on, is what you want to use those words to reprogram from going from the negative belief system to the positive. Um, and those negative beliefs that are come from majority of the time through the negative childhood experiences that we go through. So for me, if I take myself uh, as an example, <clears throat> I had... So many people raised me during my childhood. Um, I had grandparents and I had my aunties, uncles. So there was so many different belief systems that had influenced the way I, I created my belief system. Um, and more than often, it was negative things that were said to me. Um, you know, as a woman, you shouldn't look up. You shouldn't, you shouldn't raise your voice. When you get married, your sole duty is to look after your husband and your kids. Um, as a mother, you don't have any say. So all of those things were something that I actually thought was true. Um, and it was there with me for years. Um, but in deep down, I had, you know, the true authentic self, you when you're, when you're born, when you're a baby, you're pure, your soul is pure, it has no fear. You know, that's why babies have no fear, you know, if they fall off, or if they, they're continuously, you know, smiling or being bubbly, because they have no fear. They want to, they, they want to laugh. And when you, that's your authentic self, but you lose that through those experiences, those negative experiences. Um, but when you, if you're fortunate enough and you come across through those tools, it is definitely advisable to be, to take advantage of those tools and reprogram your mind so you can rebuild yourself to the person you were born and, and understand the worthy, that you are worthy to be happy. You are worthy to have that peaceful mind. You are worthy to be at peace. That's your birthright. Yeah. So I guess for me, I use um, things like, I, I guess for initially I started with, as I said, not you know, I'm, happiness comes to me with ease because I'm worthy of it. But then it went down to scripting um, I'm so happy and grateful that I wake up to this beautiful, blessed day um, and experience the, the, the breath I take, the first breath I take, my body's functioning, my body's healing if there is anything inside of me, mentally and physically. Um, I'm grateful for the cup of tea I'm, I'm going to drink. I'm grateful for the water I've used to wash my face. I'm grateful for the, you know, the plumbing system I have in my house. Uh, you know, small little things that you say, those are gratitude things that I say, I would say, but because I have been doing it for such a long time, it kind of automatically comes to me. So when I have my meditation uh, in place, it's more along the lines of I every day by day in every way, I attract positive people, positive opportunities in my life. And I impact people with love. I live with unconditional love. And that comes to me in turn um and you know what it's like every single person is different your are my experience your experience is different and those words may resonate with you but there might be other words that you want to use um 
I had a client the other day and she was saying, I don't like my voice. <laughs> um, she said, I don't like my voice. I don't want to hear my voice. And um, I asked her, I said, okay, whose voice do you like? She goes, I love my daughter's voice. I said, use her voice to do your meditation. And she came back to me last night, actually, and she said, you know what? It was so powerful. I cried in my meditation. So it's not necessary that you can you should use your voice because honestly, not everybody has the internal critics are not just of there. It could be so many different voices. But the most important thing is to use a voice that is loving and you are it resonate love is in you know um, the connection of love is in that voice. So yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. Thank you. And um, that's a good I, idea to use someone else's voice if your your voice doesn't sound right to you. But I also think that it's good for us to get to to learn how to love our own voice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's easy for you to say, Frances Mary, as a singer. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but I, but I, but I, but I know that even that's a journey. You know, is that is that it's almost painful to just need to express ourselves and so to be able to hear that is so mm. important for our confidence especially you you is and I really want to put in put into the bit where you Francis said it's, 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 it's heavily you said that it's if you don't love yourself it's important to love yourself however it takes time so giving that space for that client maybe she needs that space so using her daughter's voice initially can take towards loving herself then she can use her voice when she's come to that stage yeah i hear you on that that's it's, i love that idea yeah okay so i have my intention i i understand that i need to meditate um morning and evening um i i i've i've I understand that music is helpful and that speaking to ourselves in a voice of love is helpful um, and saying, you know, grateful things and focusing on the things that we want to achieve. How do I, like, do I, do I just sit there and talk into a microphone with these things or like, what do I do? Uh, do you mean when you, when it comes to recording it? Yeah. Write it down on a piece of paper. So initially I'd say write down the words that you want to hear. That's the first stage. Uh, don't start with lots of words because your brain will just, it's over, you don't want to overload it, especially if you're not used to doing so. So start with four sentences, then you can increase it to like a paragraph, then a, then a page. And then just get, you can, every single phone these days has a voice, so like you can record your voice. You don't need anything. Obviously it helps if you have a great, recording system because it's clearer but to begin with just start with the voice recording app you can find any app free on the app store and then just record your voice and then what you do is there's a <clears throat> the app not i normally recommend is called kind master it's free as so you can get the free one and then just upload your voice and then um use the music that you want you don't need to use the music to begin with okay just start getting familiar with your voice first and then once you know once a few times you've used your voice you listen to your voice then you can input their music okay and then adding into that i love um the the breathing that francis mary is talking about with you know kind of following your own kind of pace of breathing because i breathe very deeply and i can I can never follow somebody else's because I'm like, I'm still not, I'm still inhaling <laughs> and they're saying, you know, hold it and exhale and I'm not ready. Um, so I like that pace. Okay. So if I'm going to start with four sentences, do I just replay it or how do I do this? Um, so from hypno hypnotherapy perspective, I would say do the four sentences on repetition for at least four or five minutes. So, um, say for example i say to myself i am i am a confident person i let go of people who hurt me and i forgive those with love um that alone i would repeat it for four minutes um or five minutes which however long you want and it's basically you're getting your brain uh, to get familiar uh with your voice 
and then obviously later you can increase it into scripting which is more of like um, day by day in every way x y and z i'm so happy and grateful x y and z um, and then you know explain i mean in detail write down your day that you want to have visualize it first um, take time to write those scripts because I think it really, really helps when you put your thoughts into it rather than rushing into it. Because sometimes it's like if it's not aligned with how you feel, the script doesn't work um, because your subconscious mind keeps telling you, will tell you that's not true. That's not true. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's, yeah. it's like you've got to start where you yeah. are. So you've got to not be too ambitious in the beginning. Yeah. A really yeah. good one to start with is. I am enough. Yeah. This is so simple, but just by telling yourself you're enough and your brain can kind of accept that because it's yeah. not saying like, you know, I'm an award winning um, <laughs> uh, yeah. actress <laughs> or whatever, you know, because um, it's like you don't want your brain because your brain's not going to make that leap straight away. Yeah. You have to ease your way into yeah. feeling better and better. Yeah. What happens when self-limiting beliefs come up? So when you do start to go, but am I enough? Because this, here's, I'm not really enough at this and I'm not really succeeding at that. And like, how do you combat that uh, conflicting voice? Repetition. Uh, repetition, rep yes. Um, also, um, so I used to repeat uh, the reason because sometimes some people um, their negative experience is a bit more intense than others so while some people can accept the subconscious mind can accept it quicker than than later some people some people's subconscious mind don't because their their experiences have been very intense and if that is the case I would I would suggest highly suggest is to stop the meditation and not do it until you really dig deep and journal like talk to yourself about the situation why you felt like why did your mind go there the situation that you were in how did you feel who was it that made you feel the way you felt uh what kind of emotions did you feel and how does it make you feel like, like those emotions when does it come in your life now how do they come to your life when you do daily day day-to-day -day basis things because yeah. they are linked interlinked with the things that happened to you in the past when you write down things come up, you will be so surprised, uh, the things that come up. When you actually gone to the, the end, other end of finding out where they come from and how they make you feel, then you need to think about the person who hurt you. And then the, one of the tools I, I suggest my clients, and I've done it myself, that's why I suggest it, and it really works, is writing a letter to the person who hurt you. And then you say how you felt, what they made you feel, and then you tell them, I forgive you. Um, there's a meditation called Hopono Hopono. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a meditation that actually was designed. Uh, not, I can't remember the history of it, but it's so powerful. It actually helps you forgive those who have hurt you in a much more loving way because you don't want to hurt someone who really hurt you in such way that it's scarred, your men scarred you mentally for years. You can't. It's really hard. But it takes time to forgive them. So when you use meditation to forgive them first, then it's easier to then come back to your meditation that has your voice on it. And then slowly your your mind will accept it. There's a really good book, actually, about forgiveness that would help with that process called Radical Forgiveness by a guy called Colin Tipping. And he has a whole worksheet that you can go through Um to release those feelings and start to see that there might be like a, a bigger reason why that person hurt you, why you had that interaction with them. It's, it's from, a, it's looking at it from a more of a spiritual perspective, I guess. Yeah. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> it's a Hawaiian practice, ancient Hawaiian practice uh, called Hopono Hopono. Um, and it's basically telling the person I, I, let let go of what you've done to me with love in the basic form 
Yeah, I think that is such a beautiful practice. I don't know how to spell it, so I can't put it on the on the banner. How do you spell it, um, Asma? It's, all right. it, it, it's called H -O it, it's H O H O. Okay. O P O N O P O N O. Yeah, it is so powerful. When I first heard it, I was like, "Really, it's so powerful when you say the words," and then. Remind, remind yourself of the person and it, it, at the end of the day the person hurt you not because they wanted to hurt you they are hurting themselves and it's their hurtings that they project on you that's all it is because they've gone through something that they have not they don't know how to uh, use the healing process to forgive so you are you know whoever is the person doing this if you can use this and you're kind of fortunate to have come across these tools to use it so you can heal yourself and then at the same time it's a ripple effect forgiving is a ripple effect when you forgive those people spiritually they they actually kind of find that energy themselves some somewhere or another mm. i'm i'm having a lot of that right now with um with with just letting go or or, or um accepting i suppose is, is a better word uh, accepting you know kind of the, a lot of the programs that my that my mother has instilled and she did it for the absolute best reasons there was nothing malicious there was not it was she, it was it was her doing her absolute best but it has installed all kinds of beliefs that are hard to let go of yeah. Which is why I was asking that about meditation, because, you know, it's it's great to be able to script these things and we start off gently and we, you know, and, the, and we build up and all that. But there's at some point going to be this catch in the breath that goes, oh, hold on a second. There's a belief there that I deal with. And I, I think, you know, forgiveness and journaling is such a big part of this. Grad it's all it's all together, isn't it, really? My thing is, though, I could spend the whole day because I love this. I love the mind. I could spend the whole day doing this. Like I could start off <laughs> with the 20. I'm not kidding. I could start off with a 20 minute meditation. I'm laughing morning. because I, I feel the same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have young, beautiful children. So you, you <laughs> your attention will like I, I don't I, I don't have any reason why I have to do anything else. So I could start off with 20 minute meditation and then I could go. I think I'll journal and that could be an hour and I could go down that hole and then I could think oh let me look this up and then I could do some work with I mean I'm not kidding you and then it would be two o'clock in the afternoon and I could just play with this um all the time and I think you know we kind of have to set some boundaries around this because I'm an HI personality I want to do everything like now as yeah. you've already found <laughs> As, as you have already found from, you know, the conversation, I'm like, okay, so how do I do it all perfectly now? Um, um, you know, the thing is, you, you, on a daily basis, you don't have to do the two hour time. Weekly okay. basis, you can do two hour time. On a daily, for me, for me, I can't do two hour time on a daily basis with <laughs> three kids. So my five <laughs> minutes is okay. But when, on, on a Friday, my husband comes home early and I'll take my two hours if I can, if the baby doesn't want nursing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I will take my two hours and I'll do my journaling. And that is enough. Okay. That is enough. Because sometimes it becomes like, a, from what I remember when I first started, it becomes like a chore. And something that you enjoy, you end up not enjoying because it's like, oh, I have to do journaling again. But it shouldn't feel like that. It should be like, I want to journal because I really want to spend some time with me and my thoughts. Mm. Does journaling come into your practice, Frances Mary, with meditation and? Yeah, very much so. And I, I, um, I agree with Nazma. It's a very powerful, transformative process. Um, it's, journaling has helped me through some of the most difficult times in my life. Um, and I feel that I've become so much more self-aware because of it. Um, and it really is like, I, I love it. I mean, I try to do it every day. And then sometimes, you know, life takes over and I miss a few days, but then it feels like such a treat to go back to it because yeah. it feels like I'm able to like reconnect with me. It's like me spending quality time with myself. Yeah. So I love it I, and I highly recommend it. I did, um, I did a book called The Artist's Way that got me kind of doing it every morning. It's at Lavender's, Lavender's Journal. Uh, the, lady, 
is that Lavenders? I think that's her journal. She's uh, there's a YouTube channel called Lavender. I can't remember her name. She her journal is called The Artist Way. Oh, I haven't heard of her. The, the yeah. book is by Julia Cameron. Um, I think that might be. I'm not sure her name, but that's her channel <laughs> called Love. It could be totally very different, but. <laughs> Oh well, it's a it's a really good book, and 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 for creativity as well, it's wonderful. It really kind of frees you up and stops you from procrastinating, and so yeah, so journaling, yeah, definitely it makes you much more self aware, and it, it it enables you to work through those difficult issues and feelings, and come up with your own solutions. Right, and again, that's in our own voice, right? Like that's. Mm -hmm. That's because we're, you know, we're we're having that internal dialogue as as we're putting it on the page, and it's 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 coming from us. So it's 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 an interesting thing that we like. I'm I'm struggling to think recording myself because a lot of people go, "Oh, I don't like to hear that. My own voice sounds funny." But but then we but then we do hear our own voice when we're journaling. So it can be mm -hmm. a nice way, I would imagine, to get to know our internal voice. Mm -hmm. And then let that out in in an auditory way um, on on the recording. Do we meditate first and then journal, or vice versa? What's your views? I meditate first, first thing. Yeah. Do it's you? Be a good way of like catching your thoughts before your thoughts start getting really busy and carried away. Um, it's a good way of like quieting them. Yeah. Okay. So that they don't go running away because I, I definitely notice that if I haven't meditated that my brain is much more likely to run off, you know, after some imaginary problem. Yeah. And I'll, it, my brain will blow it all up out of all proportion. But if I meditate, then I kind of bypass that part of my brain. Yeah, but then that's when you are actually bringing your brain wave to the theta level where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the theta wave, that's when you're more creative. And when you're journaling you're actually letting off everything you feel your hand is actually writing you don't even have control over what you're writing it's so flowy but when you have come out from this chaotic day and you're trying to journal you're like okay what do I write you you can't because there's too much thoughts there's about 60 to 70 thousand thoughts that we have on a daily basis can you imagine <laughs> where do you start yeah I think that's where I'm going wrong because I journal first okay and then I don't want to meditate because I'm yeah. like, oh, I've just exhausted myself. I don't yeah. want to meditate now. I, I, I had it in my head that that would be kind of like a nice way of coming back to being centered, having had my thoughts run away. Um, so, but it's interesting that you say that they don't do that if you do it in the other order. So this yeah. is very good. This is very good. I've tried it both ways as well. You know, I've tried doing the writing first and then the meditating. And I definitely think that that it's better to do it the other way. Yeah. Okay, that's good advice. Okay, and then where does gratitude practice? Obviously, it comes into your scripting when you're preparing your four sentences or so. Um, and and so your gratitude practice comes in there. Do you have an additional gratitude practice, you guys? So how I do it is, so obviously do the meditation. Mm -hmm. Affirmation becomes my journaling, scripting, and gratitude so it depends how you do it okay, okay so okay. when I do my journaling I'll take three sentences just doing gratitude so three different gratitude each day and then from the gratitude it leads into scripting so um, so in the night it's different obviously in the morning and in the night in the night I will just recap on what happened in the day and if I've had a bad moment how could I have dealt with it the right way? And forgiving yourself is another most important thing on journaling because we are human beings. We will make mistakes. We are not perfect. So we, you know, during the journaling, I forgive myself um, while, when I'm scripting. That's the second stage. The third stage is the scripting of my ideal day. Okay. So okay. gratitude, unloading, then reloading if that makes sense so those are and you would play all of them not play the play on the meditation this is, this is just journaling this is not meditation oh, this is this just is journaling. Totally okay. Separate. yeah okay so the the meditation is just one meditation that has been i've been using it for the last three years now um 
and it's about self-love how I have you know um, healed my past and what I've gone through and what I believe in myself how I feel worthy what words resonate of being feeling worthy so like I said it's different for everyone but I'm happy to share my script if you want on in the group I'm not I've got no fear of that I would love that so you have one script that you use continuously the script for the meditation, yes, mm -hmm. uh, but the scripts for the journal, it's, it's it, it de depends. It depends on the goals that I'm going working towards, so it can change every three months. Okay. When I so every time I have a baby, um, because <laughs> <laughs> every year, <I> do, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> goodness gracious me, God forbid. Uh, <laughs> yes, every time I have a baby, one is knocking on the door. Anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I go through postnatal depression. That's something that is just yeah. in the, you know, so some of the things that you can heal, but it can always come back to the surface when you're in a vulnerable time. So my postnatal depression always comes back. But obviously, I'm much more equipped with what I need to do. So that changes. So my script totally changed for that period. But then I'm back to the one that I used to use because now I feel like I'm back on where I was. I was meant to be. Beautiful. Beautiful. And Frances Mary, you have several scripts. Yeah, I have a different process. Um, I do the gratitude, but I do it like I have a kind of structured, um, I suppose you could call it a habit tracking sheet that I've designed. So I basically go in in the morning, I do my gratitude, I set my intentions, I say how I want to feel, say how I want to show up in the world, um, what kind of energy I want to create. Um, and then I do a check back in the, at the end of the day where I, it's, an, um, you know, and it takes 10 minutes, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. Um, you know, I check up how, how did I, how well did I fulfill my intentions? So did I bring the energy that I wanted to? Um, did I manage to do all the things that I wanted to do? And then I have a little tick box, which is my habit tracker, where I just kind of tick off if I got my things done, like my singing practice and uh, my exercise and things like that. Um, and then this, and then the meditation is a separate thing. So in the morning, I do like a guided meditation. I do someone else's meditation, and then in the evening, I will put on one of my recordings. And so I've probably got about five different ones that I use for different, depending on how I'm feeling. Like one of them is designed to kind of get me into uh, like a he a healing space. Um, one is designed to make me kind of vision the future. Um, and where in fact, I've got two different ones where I kind of vision, vision how I want to be and what, where I want to be in the future. Um, and one of them is kind of there's, I leave a bit of space where I can visualize. And then the other one is, um, oh, I've got one that I've done for, my, for um, managing anxiety. And then I've got one that is, just programming my brain to get into my routine for the next day. So I've got quite a few and I'm, I guess I'm a writer. So because I'm a writer, it's, you know, sometimes they just kind of flow out of me. So, um, and I think it depends also, you're, you're so advanced. So if you're a beginner, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend so many because obviously you're getting used to the process, but with Frances, she's got so many years of experience. She's mastered the, the method or the tool um so I guess it's it's so powerful when you do have the different I think I have not come to that stage yet but definitely would like to have because my mind is still healing from so many different areas so um it's good to go with where you are as a person um and then take it from there beautiful thank you so much for sharing this I already decided about 25 minutes ago that I need to go back and watch this again <laughs> um, because I started off with all these notes and then <laughs> and then I just got lost in the conversation so I need to go back and and just and just really kind of absorb how I want to use this information and how how it will work for me as a starting point um, I do love a gong bath like even if you just did that once a week, I mean, there are, there are some beautiful apps as well. And, and, and I know 
we can't all be live right now, but if you get an opportunity to do something like that or like bowls or anything like that, oh, I love that. It just, it just, I just find it very healing. Um, mm. uh, but I like it uh, ideally if it's live, you know, because then you pick up the vibrations as well as the, yeah. the, the sounds. It's, it's just um, um, the other, the other kind of meditation that I enjoy is um, with, uh, ties and that sounds really strange but it's a very personal and private practice can't believe i'm sharing this um but we're friends it's fine um which is which is just about kind of cr almost creating like swaddling like we do with babies and really kind of breathing into that those restrictions and feeling where the energy needs to release and i find that that is helps me to really because you know people talk about like where is the where where is the are you holding tension and so i can't always relate to that in my own body and so being quite swaddled makes me kind of go oh it's yeah it's there it's in my it's in that shoulder or or it's it's in my ankles or wherever and i i really um i i enjoy the 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 kind of play of that because you're concentrating only on that so your mind doesn't wander to other things um, it's a different kind of meditation than what we've been talking about but what I wanted to kind of introduce in terms of food for thought for people is that there are many forms of being able to to meditate um, I'm going to use my own voice because I I, I like I never watch my own videos back and stuff so I, it'll be an interesting challenge to play with that um, but you know, wherever you are in your practice and finding ways to really kind of feel into where are the pain points and where are the beliefs and, and where do you want to be going? These are, are just such powerful tools. And I thank you guys. So I you guys are still looking at me like disbelief. Did you really just say ties? Yes. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, and, and I, I, I use, I use a, a guided meditation for that as well, but, um, you know, there are lots of tools online if you're new to meditation and you're not ready to go to your own voice um i started with deepak chopra i'm not that's not a plug for them but they do beautiful guided meditation and they explain it so simply and i just enjoy that and they have a timer and they have music and it all just and there are many many themes to that so you could try that any other ways of getting into meditation that you guys can think of um, I started from YouTube. Um, okay, Stephen, St something Jason Stevenson. Okay, his meditation is what I, where I started from. So if you're a beginner, I would say that definitely highly recommend those YouTube videos. But there's so many guided visualization and just normal meditation uh, that can be found. I guess you just have to go through them and whatever resonates with you, mm. take that on, and then come into maybe your voice. That's how I, I began anyway. Beautiful. Esther Hicks, I can recommend as well. She does some wonderful meditations. Cool. I will definitely check them out. And again, it's a lot about the voice. Yeah. It's a lot about, you know, you, what, what resonates with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much for being thank here you. and sharing. If you guys have questions, and I know we've had about eight people come and go. It's been interesting watching it because it's like, oh, there's people, oh no, they're gone, now they're here. So, <laughs> um, so and, I, and I know um, some people said they couldn't be here, but they watch on replay. Really, if you have questions or you want to clarify anything or you want to share any of your own kind of ideas or practices, then do that in the comments. And then, uh, and then we'll be in there and we can, we can uh, get involved in that conversation. Thank you again, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Nazma. Nice to meet you. I've learned so much from you. Thank you so much. I thank really you, guys. Thank and you. learned so much from you too. So thank, thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Beautiful. Take care, you guys. Bye for Bye. now. Thanks, Heather. <laughs>